how the schedule could be used during pre-construction. Once you start creating a schedule in, in site control and you get rid of the complex web of links and you have the ability to uh, just look at a schedule at a glance, you'll be able to start optimizing the schedule using locations. In Gantt chart, in, in, a, in a Primavera schedule or in a Microsoft project schedule, every schedule looks good at first glance. You don't really see where the problems are. And you don't really see what kind of uh, problems you need to resolve or where you have the ability to optimize the schedule itself. Uh, you have to have the, a pretty trained eye to, to see those problems at the first glance. And if you're not an experienced planner, it will take a couple of uh, hours maybe to go through a lot of pages and figure out where the problems are. So let me give you a five-second analysis of a, of a Gantt chart schedule in Flowline. Basically, when you look at the schedule, this is what looks, up, looks like picostics, as Holly explained before, but it really shows you a lot of information. You can see that you've got multiple starts at several dates. Um, you've got different crews colliding at the same location. You've got productivity of crews faster than the preceding task here. So, for example, if the line, a yellow line here is framing, you've got drywall coming up here. The drywall guys have a higher productivity or a faster productivity. You can see that easily drywall cannot be installed here because you don't have frame, framing finished yet. And you can see that very quickly on a full line schedule without drilling into the details. You can start optimizing the schedule also by uh, identifying the areas that are underutilized and uh, making sure that your produ production rate and the various crews are progressing through the site, through the construction zones at a parallel pace, at a similar pace itself. When the schedule is linked uh, to a model, you will be able to analyze constructability. And as I said earlier, if the framing is not finished yet, but you're ready to build the, uh, uh, the drywall, uh, you have a problem. And that's very easy to visualize in different views of the model and the schedule itself as well. Once you have the schedule and you started defining the optimum productivity, you can further optimize the schedule by calculating accurate durations using quantity, production rate, and location from a model. So by using production rates, you're not just guessing the durations for different activities and different tasks in your full line schedule. You're actually using information from the site, from the, um, the design that helps you drive resource loading and helps you drive durations for the schedule itself. The quantity in this case doesn't necessarily have to be the quantity of drywall or the quantity of concrete that you need to install. It could be as simple as just man hours that you discuss with your subcontractors and put in the man hours estimated by the subcontractor with the production rate across different locations, which will help you track the schedule more accurately, which I'm going to talk about in a second. If you have a uh, takeoff generated by uh, a product such as uh, uh, Vico Office, you can then use that takeoff to plug in the numbers, the quantities, the result of the takeoff into your uh, schedule and define those accurate durations. And I'm going to show you how that works inside control, but it's pretty easy because you basically just copy-paste quantities from, uh, from an Excel spreadsheet or from a model into control. Once you have the uh, schedule accurately calculated based on quantities, and production rates, you can easily resource load your schedule and generate a resource graph, level your resources, make sure that you don't have uh, peaks and valleys for different trades. Uh, you can also cost load the schedule, which will help you generate a uh, cash flow of the project. And you can also show the critical path uh, using the, uh, the per chart view or just using any of the uh, traditional views that, uh, that you might you know, be used to in, uh, in other programs. So in order to um, bring in quantities to this, to this schedule, 
if I look at the billing, bill of, bills of quantities of this uh, schedule, you can see that I don't have any quantities associated with any of the tasks here. And I can add quantities by copy-pasting, in this case, uh, man hours from a uh, control, from a Excel spreadsheet into my, uh, into my control schedule. You can see that I broke down the locations, and I've got all three tasks listed here in my Excel spreadsheet. When I copy these look, uh, quantities over to my uh, control spreadsheet, I can start assigning these, the man hour information to the various activities. So I can assign task one quantities to task one, a man hours for uh, the second task, and then man hours for the third task. And as I do that, you will see that the durations calculated in my schedule are automatically updated. And now instead of uh, just uh, thin lines, I have thicker lines. If I click on any of these lines, it will tell me the hourly estimate for that particular task. It will show me the uh, production rate. In this case, uh, we've got eight hours in the shift. And this information, the quantity information, can be also as simple as square footages. So if you know the floor plates and the size of the floor plate, you can start using that as the initial information to uh, start manipulating your uh, your schedule. And if, for example, the design changes and you want to edit some of these quantities, you can come in and edit them on the fly. Uh, if the podium de gets bigger and uh, we will need more time, uh, you can just easily enter, uh, you know, 80 hours for that particular task. And as I do that, the line automatically updates and sh shows me the impact of that new duration based on a new quantity on the overall schedule, and I can see where my date is. If you need to meet a date and you want to match, uh, let's say, the, uh, the beginning of, uh, of November as a, uh, as a target date, you can grab the line or let's say beginning of October, you can grab the line, you can grab this activity, and uh, when you release your cursor, control will automatically tell you how you need to increase your crew size to three in order to meet that, uh, that new deadline. You can also decide that um, your production factor is different because you have a more uh, skilled crew or your consumption is different because you have uh, maybe less material. But by doing that, control again automatically changes the relationship between tasks, updates the schedule, and, and brings in the, uh, the uh, other tasks to meet the project schedule that, uh, that you'd like to meet. So optimizing the schedule is, is pretty simple because you always have real-time, real feedback from control about your resource usage, about your production rates, and about your uh, flow of, uh, of construction. 